gift from God, and it looks good on you. It looks good on me. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. This gift, this gift looks good on me. Looks good on I me. need you to call five people and tell them that I'm looking good today. <laughs> yeah, call them up, text them up, tell them to join the service because we look good today. Not because of us, but because of the gift. The gift of grace that God has given to us, and we just want to tell everybody about how good it is. Well, if you can join me real quick. I just want to share this scripture with you. I believe it's something that will help us prioritize our morning. In Philippians chapter 3, it says this. In verse number 12, Paul says, Not that I have already obtained or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, has also laid hold of me. Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, he says, I press, I press. Forward, forward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. Amen. Amen. Well, Paul is just simply trying to get us to prioritize some things this morning. Amen. Amen. We have to learn how to forget those things that are holding us back and keeping us from being able to go and do what God called us to do. We call this moving forward. Somebody yeah, said move forward. forward. Move forward. God has graced us to be able to move, move forward. forward. But in order to move forward, we got to do what Paul says. We got to forget. Mm -hmm. And then what I like what Paul says is that it's not enough just to forget. We got to press. Amen. 
This morning, there may be some people out there that are feeling some things, some negative feelings, some aches, some pains. Amen. You may even be feeling some grief, some loneliness, some despair. But God says that you got to press. Not that you're pressing that you can get more, but you got to press where God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. And what we know is that God wants you to be well. Amen? Amen. He wants it to be good with you so that you can continue to tell everybody God is good. God is good. Yes. You know, it's hard to tell people that it's God is good if you're not willing to press. Amen. I'm feeling some things this morning myself, but I have to press forward for what God has for me. So that you can press forward for what God has for you. And us doing that together, amen, plus the five people you just call or text, amen, we're getting ready to change some things. Somebody said we're going to change some things. We're going to change some things. Yeah, we're going to do that thing right now. So I still ain't heard no videos. I ain't heard no comments from y'all. I'm waiting on y'all testimony. We're trying to get this summer kicked off, you know, with your testimony, with your face, with your picture. Because I know y'all getting tired of seeing my mug. So I want to see your mug. So y'all send me some videos <laughs> so that we can tell some stories about you. But having said that, I just want to pray for you. Amen. It's all right because prayer is a good thing. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come forward and I pray, Lord, that you would give each person, Lord God, the strength, the ability to press out of the mood, the moment, Lord God, that may be apprehending them, that may be holding them back keeping them, Lord, from getting their praise on, keeping them from being able to receive their blessing. I pray, Lord God, that this will be a great service. Father, where your people will receive everything that you have for them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Having said that, we're going to get ourselves ready and adjusted for some worship. Y'all ready to do some praise and some worship? Amen. Did you guys enjoy the service that we had with Pastor Susanna? And his church down at oh, First yes. at Paso. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's my son. Yeah. And that's their church. And we just had a wonderful time fellowshipping with them. And um, we just love them. And we just pray that God will just continue to bless them. I don't know if you guys had the opportunity to see the, the, the damage that occurred to their church uh, over the... Uh, winter where pipes were busting down in Texas, but pretty much it tore up their whole church. But guess what? God is faithful. He helped them to rebuild their church and their church looks better than ever. Mm -hmm. So having said that, there's a reason. Amen. There's a reason that we continue to serve him faithfully. Amen. Amen. And so uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of the way and let Pastor Sharon come forward. Somebody say, come forward, Pastor Sharon. We're waiting on you. <laughs> come forward, come forward. On my way. On my way. Everybody, all right, all right. That moment we've been waiting for is to go ahead and praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so Pastor Rodney was talking about last week. It was so nice to see how far the seed that was sown here 17 years ago into the Carrillo family's life has come. I don't know if you saw, like he said, he mentioned all the damage and all the restoration, but just every time we go, even in the times past, when we go and we see the facility that they have and the congregation and everything that God is doing in them, it just warms our heart to know that those seeds have now taken off. And so don't take for granted the seeds that God has deposited in you or the seeds that he's deposited in someone else by the unction of the Holy Ghost because they shall produce a harvest, and especially if it's sown on good soil. Amen? And so it was really good to be there. It was good to give Pastor Rodney the time off. 
for Father's Day. And, um, you know, we just had a really good time. And I hope you enjoyed your Father's Day, the fathers that you celebrated, because, you know, our Father in Heaven uh, allowed us to have those fathers here on Earth. But if you don't have a Father that is here, or even present in your life, our Heavenly Father is worthy to be praised. Amen? So are you ready to magnify the Lord? Turn to Psalm 34 with me. This is a psalm uh, that David, <laughs> he did when he was pretending to be kind of a little on the crazy side uh, when he was being, you know, driven away and everything from uh, Abimelech. But, as Pastor was saying, when we have to press, this is one of those things we do. We press, we speak things and call those things that be not as though they are. We speak these things, we praise God so we can get out of ourselves. And that's what David was doing. He had to get out. He had to get out of the situation he was in. So the only thing he knew to do was to magnify the Lord. So let's go with Psalm 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my, all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. Let me tell you, when we seek the Lord in our darkest hour, or when we're not feeling some kind of way, when we press in, as Pastor Rodney was talking to us about, he meets us right where we are. So this morning, let's get in, let's get together and go ahead and magnify the Lord. You ready? Come on, let's put your hands together. Can you give me some volume there, Pastor? to be ready. 
one song. He is our rock. He is our salvation. And there is none more worthier than him. But even in all the fact that he is so much more worthy in us, he is El Elyon, our God most high. He is the one that sits high above, sees all, knows all, does all, thinks all, creates all. There's nothing new to him under the sun. There's nothing new, uh, new to him. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He is our rock. And he's worthy. And even though he's all of those things, he found it necessary to come here in the form of man, Jesus Christ. God with us, our Emmanuel, and embody all of his characteristics so that we can see it, see him, believe him, and have everlasting life. He did that because. He felt that we're worthy of this life. He hung, bled, and died so that we could live life eternally and abundantly right here on earth as well as in heaven. And so, you know, as we lift up our praise to him and we press in, take comfort in the fact that he thought you were worthy. Say, thank you, Jesus for thinking that I am worthy. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
because you are the one and only true God that makes it possible for us to live this life and to live it fully, to live it abundantly, to live it in your grace. Your salvation is what makes us able to do the things that we do day in and day out. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over anyone that's under the sound of my voice right now that has not accepted you and know you to be their personal Savior, God. I pray right now, God, that you would just touch their heart. And right now, if that's you and you're hearing me say this, and you're saying, I don't know what my end will be. I don't know that tomorrow, if I don't wake up, where I will be. I want you to repeat after these words with me so that you can be assured in knowing that the song that we just sang is also for you. So just take a moment and repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that you are the living God that came here on this earth and walked among men to live a life, a life that we could see as an example. I ask you right now, Jesus, to be with you. And so in doing that, I take my words and say, I believe that you are Lord. I accept you as my Savior, and I thank you in advance for all that you have done in my life and will continue to do. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Be my leader. Be my teacher. Be my guide. I receive you now, and I thank you that I shall rest in eternity with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you said that prayer, I tell you right there, there's a cloud of witnesses right here on earth that are participating in this service, that are clapping you on and saying, welcome to the family of faith, because Jesus is your Lord, and he's our Lord, and we are all members of this body. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, that's all right. Let's get on with the word. Y'all ready for the word? God's got a good word for us today. You know, Pastor, a couple weeks ago, started teaching on conviction. He's teaching this thing so that we can begin to check ourselves and understand what's happening. But it's a good thing when conviction comes. Amen? Because as the as the uh, little graphic shows, it's that intersection between where faith and action comes together. Let's get ready to pass, receive Pastor Rodney. Amen? Amen. Let's give him a hand clap. and why is this? And we looked at the life of Daniel in uh, Daniel chapter 1 to see that, yeah, he was at a crossroad. 
But the thing that was going to get him through his crossroad, that was going to get him through his tight spot, and the thing that's going to get you through your tight spot and your crossroad as well, is going to be your conviction. And so we spent some time talking about that conviction. And one of the things that Daniel had experienced and that he knew was this, is that God had his back. And God wants you to know that he got your back. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, God got me. God got me. And that's an important thing because we all go through something. Somebody said, I go through something. I go through something. So do you. Mm -hmm. So see, that's the thing that makes it worth us all coming and hanging out together, right? Is that I've been through something, you've been through something. Maybe together, you know, we may be able to figure this thing out. This thing that's called life because... Life just continues to go, and so it was with Daniel. So what we want to do this morning is that we want to get to this place that this uh, conviction brought Daniel and his friends to, and it brought them to this intersection. Somebody say intersection. The intersection. So the intersection is, you know, typically what we know to be is the crossing of two roads or two paths or there's something that is interconnected, the intersection, right? And so this intersection is where our faith and our action. Somebody say your faith. Your faith. And your action. And your action. Because we have faith, right? We have faith because we've been hearing. But then we have this other important thing that we have to jump into is that now my faith is calling me to do something. Will I do it? Do I have the conviction that I have the clarity to go ahead and do it or not? Well, that's what we're going to explore today. So if you do have your Bibles, turn with us to Romans chapter 12. And we're going to look at a scripture in verse number three. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right, I'm ready too. It says in Romans 12, verse number three. Romans 12, Romans verse 12. number three. And I, I put this as a, a, as a body title that says only you can build your faith. Amen. You're at a crossroad between faith and action, but only you can build your faith. It says in verse 3, For I say, through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think what? Soberly. Mm -hmm. hmm. Sober thinking. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so we're going to look at this intersection between faith and action. But as it says in Romans, God has dealt every man, every woman the measure of faith. Amen? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I always looked at that and just said how much God is dumping out to me. But what we're going to explore in the message today is that God is not talking about quantity. Hmm. So call your friends and tell them, say, hey, they're talking about faith. You need to hear this. Amen. All right. So measure. Somebody say measure. Measure. Yeah. I told you that Paul was difficult. Now you will see just how difficult he really is when you read this verse. What do you think it means? What do you think it means, the measure of faith? Do you think that Paul is saying that God gives you some amount of faith, like a storekeeper who sells you one pound of roast beef? Do you imagine that God pours a certain quantity of faith into your bottles and you just use it for later? Is, is that what we think when we hear that verse? <laughs> well, that's not all that it means. So in order for us to understand what it means, we have to take a look at what this word means in the Greek. So if we knew that the Greek word here is metron, we would immediately know that Paul is not talking about quantity. He is talking about the measuring tool. Amen? So the metron is not an amount. It is the thing we use to measure the amount. Amen? Amen. So you need a tool that allows you to measure the amount. Well, I brought some illustrations with me today so that we could all be on the same accord as we talk about measuring. Everybody know what this is? 
It's called a measuring cup. And it is designed to tell you how much fluid or how much volume, right? If you're measuring flour or sugar, it's going to give you a measurement. It is a tool. It is not the sugar. <laughs> it is not the water. I had to put a little coloring in there so you guys could see that. Can everybody see that? This is so that we have a standard. Somebody say a standard. A standard. So that's going to be very important as we continue. So this measuring device does not measure temperature because hmm. that's not what it was designed for. This is the tool for measuring an amount, right, as it pertains to a liquid or uh, in, in our case, sometimes flour. But this right here is also a metron. Mm. It's called a thermometer. What does a thermometer measure? Somebody say temperature. temperature. It is a measuring tool. So if I want to know a volume, then I don't need to use this tool. I need to use this tool if I want to know how warm something is or how cool something is, right? Mm -hmm. I use the thermometer. So the Metron is the tool that God has given us to measure our faith. Yeah. Why is that important? Well, it, it's important because a lot of times we, we, we think we have more than what we really have, right? Hmm. Come on. Anybody ever tried to make a cake mm -hmm. and you just knew you had two cups of sugar in there and you got in there and when you went to measure, you found out that you were short. Mm -hmm. You found out that, you know, you didn't have two cups which you really needed. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever tried to go around and say, well, I don't really need two cups. Even though the recipe says you need two cups, it don't matter. <laughs> and then you go ahead and use what you have, right, mm -hmm. short, and you find out it didn't turn out what you expected. Right. Why? Because you didn't follow all of the instructions. So in other words, you changed the standard. Mm. How many times do we change the standard? Amen? Come on, God didn't really say that. Mm. God doesn't expect for me to, to follow all of that, does he? Mm. How many times do we try to change God's standard from what he really said? The metron is what God gives us. He says the metron is not the amount. It is the thing we use to measure the amount. It is the standard of the measurement. See, I got one for y'all. How many people ever go to the gas station and you know, you kind of don't trust the pump? Right. You know, man, I know it says 10 gallons, but you know, I read how they can trick you. <clears throat> But what you're really saying is that you want to make sure that the standard for what they're measuring the gas for a gallon, right, is accurate. Right. You want to make sure that there is a standard and that they check it because nobody wants to come up short. Amen? So God doesn't want for you to come up short either. Say, God, God. doesn't want me to come up short. So he gives us a measure of faith. So that what God gives to every believer, God supplies the perfect standard. Say the perfect standard. The perfect standard. See, God, he individualized it for you. So your standard doesn't have to be my standard, amen? What we both have to do is learn what faith is, right? And learn how to apply it. So God supplies the perfect standard for measuring our dependence and trust in him. See, that's the thing, is that nobody can tell you what your measure is, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's something that is between you and God. God. Amen? And so aren't you glad that the standard that God wants you to use is between you and him? And that you don't have to be worried about what other people say. So it says, God gives you the ability to determine, listen to this, God gives you the ability to determine how you are doing. Somebody say, how am I doing? How am I doing? Yeah, nobody can really answer that question for you, right? Mm -mm. Right? You have to answer that question for yourself. How are you doing? <laughs> what is your standard for measuring your faith? Amen? You know, do you measure your faith only on what 
Exactly. You well, what you feel, but also what you what you feel like you receive. Amen. Mm. Well, I got a Mercedes in the driveway, therefore my faith must be really high. Mm. Amen. I got a big house, therefore my faith must be really strong. But I also have challenges in my health that maybe I don't have faith for. And so what God is saying is that he gives you a standard so you can ask yourself how you are doing. doing. So God wants to know how you are doing so he gives you a measure. And that is something that we talk to him when we go to prayer. He makes it possible for you to judge your relationship with him. He makes it possible for you to judge your relationship with him. Amen. So who is it between? You, you and, God. and God. So what other people are thinking has nothing to do with your measurement. Amen? Amen. Somebody says that people don't determine my measurement. People don't determine my measurement. God does. God does. He gave you, he gave you the tool, the standard, the metron for you to be able to determine how you are doing. For you to be able to judge your relationship. Somebody says my relationship. My relationship. That's right. That's what I love about it. This is between me and God. Amen? So, you know, if I'm the type of person that likes to talk to God real loud, that's between me and God. If I'm the type of person who just likes to keep it quiet, that's between me and God. But here's the thing, God does expect for you to judge how you're doing and what's going on with this relationship. Mm -hmm. What the kids will call that is that we have to DTR. Define the relationship. Yeah, we have to define this relationship. God is working with you to define the relationship. He has this measurement, right? You know, this measurement, you know, that you know some people may say, oh, come on, you can't judge me. But, but I think it's, a, it's an accurate standard. Do you spend time with God? Come on, that's an accurate measurement, do you? What do you spend time with God doing? It's a measurement. It's not a judgment, it's a measurement. But anyway, just compare it to the standard. You don't have to be confused. You don't have to guess. Me and Sharon were talking about that this morning. Is this, is that sometimes what happens when we get into a crisis, into the crossroad, into the crossfire, at the intersection, rather than us using the standard that God has given us, we start estimating. <laughs> you know, and then you know you're really in trouble when you start guesstimating. Mm -hmm. Come on, how far away are we to the street, really? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go with maybe 50 feet and you're standing on top of the street and you're wondering why you're getting ready to get hit mm -hmm. because you're estimating. Mm -hmm. All right, God wants for you to be sure that you are able to know. So what is the measuring standard? It is, somebody say, faith. Faith. You say, wait a minute. Didn't we just say faith is not the quantity distributed like honey in a bottle? Yes, it's right. Faith is the Hebrew equivalent of trustworthiness. Trustworthiness. Amen? That God is trustworthy. Amen? Amen. So trustworthiness and dependability. So God is trustworthy and he is dependable and he is true. true. So when you begin to put all those things together, that is a accurate measurement mm -hmm. to what the standard is. Can God say that about us mm -hmm. and some of our decisions? Are we being trustworthy? Mm -hmm. In other words, are we being transparent? Right. <laughs> Can God depend on us like we want him to depend on, on us? Can, can we? Yeah, I got it wrong, yeah. So in other words, God wants to know, can he depend on you like you can depend on him? Is that important? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's important. Why? Because God is interested in what? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Amen? So don't be giving God no guesstimations. Tell him how you doing. Are you, if you're weak in your face, say I'm weak. I'm weak, huh? Come on. If I'm struggling in my face, say I'm struggling. Struggling. Yeah, I remember the story in the Bible. The man said, look here, God. 
you know, my daughter needs to be healed, but all I can just say, you know, help me with my underly. Yep. He was using his yes. measurement yes. tool to tell God that, you know what, I don't have what I'm supposed to have. All I can do is tell you the truth. Yeah. Man, I don't believe. Hmm. You say, what happens when you tell God you don't believe? Well, in this case, God said, mm, fine. Somebody stepped up to the plate and told the truth. I wonder what would happen in our prayer lives if we actually told God the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The truth. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, scary, isn't it? Well, well, well the, the truth is, is that, you know, God, uh, the thing that you told me to stop doing, I'm still doing. Mm -hmm. See, see, it's not a judgment. God has already spoken to your heart, and you're supposed to be convicted by that. You're supposed to tell God that, God, I'm trying. Right. You're supposed to tell God that, you know, God, I need some help. Mm-hmm. The help came, and I told him no. That's being trustworthy. That's you putting it out there before God and telling God that, you know what, God? I still got this thing. I haven't given it to you. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know when I spoke to your heart, do you still feel convicted? Right. I don't want you to feel judged. I want you to feel convicted because I want you to turn and do something different. That's what God is saying to us. So he does that by giving us a measure of faith. All right. So God gives us the measuring stick of faith, his trustworthiness, his reliability, and his truth. It is not something we can store in the bottle. It is his active benevolence towards us. Active benevolence. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I like benevolence. <laughs> Amen? I, I, I like to be able to be benevolent, to give to someone that has a need in their life, to help them get through. I like for people to, in turn, see that, you know, I have a need in my life and for them to be generous and give. To so God, in his benevolence, gives us a gift. For something that we are lacking. Somebody say sometimes. Sometimes. We're lacking. We're lacking. We don't have it all together. And so we go to God. And what God does, because we come to him in spirit and in truth, he's able to reward us. He's able to give us something that we really need. See, the thing I love about God is that sometimes he does do it monetarily. But most of the times, he does it by giving us some wisdom. Amen? Yeah. Huh, yeah, like how Jesus said, see, how long y'all been with me, y'all? Y'all been with me a long time. But see, you still don't have no faith. Hmm. Why would Jesus say that to him? Because Jesus knew that they was using the wrong measurement. They was going down the road trying to compare miracle to miracle, hmm. blessing to blessing, and that wasn't allowing them to be able to grow. Mm. Because you go from blessing to blessing, that still doesn't tell God how you're doing. That's true. Come on, y'all. That's true. That only tells God that, you know, you still ain't grew up. <laughs> <laughs> because what God is looking for you to be able to do is pick his word up, amen, do what it tells you, and begin to see the results. That is what Daniel did, mm. amen. He took God at his word, amen. Amen. And he says, you know what? Whatever the results are, so be it. I was talking with Pastor Sharon about that whole thing, scenario is this, is that, see, the trustworthiness. See, you know, you can see that Daniel put himself and his friends into the position where they had to trust God. Amen? Because they told the eunuch, who understood, if he did what they requested, they all was going to get killed. Mm-hmm. If it didn't work, it was going to be on God because they had a conviction and they followed it. Mm -hmm. And because they followed it, God was there and he met them and caused them to be fatter and healthier and wiser than ever. Amen. And so we go on here and it says 
So God has given to every believer, not just the important ones, a metron of faith, a measuring stick of what is good, fitted, and fulfilled. God has given you a metron of faith, a measuring stick of what is good, what is fitted, and fulfilled. This is critically important because it means that the gifts given for edification of the body, the next thing Paul's argument, do not and cannot come from you and me. These gifts depend entirely on God's gracious giving. Amen. It depends on God's gracious giving. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but one of the things is, is that the gifts don't get better if you never use the gift I gave you before. Come on. If you're still struggling to use the socks I gave you, don't be looking for shoes. Well. Why? Because... You're supposed to put the socks on first. Hmm. Oh, you're saying is that God has some priorities he wants us to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does. See, we want to move mountains before we set before the cross. Mm. Can, can, I, can I talk about it for a minute? God, I don't want to learn the lessons of repentance. Mm -mm. I want to learn the lessons of how to move mountains. Mm. I, I, I want to learn the great lessons of profit. Wait a minute. Who gives the gift? God gives the gift. He gives the gift according to your ability. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. That's good. I wish y'all could stay with me right now. <laughs> God gives you the gift according to your ability. Come on. Ain't no need God giving you a gift that you ain't able to use yet. Come on. You know, some of us, there's a reason you only get a spoon. <laughs> because that's all you're able to use. Mm -hmm. According to your ability. It goes on. It says, a metron of faith, a measure stick of what is good and fit. So these gifts depend entirely on God's gracious giving. He allots them to everyone. No one is exempt. No one is excused. God gives, God gives, you receive. <laughs> like that one. Write that down. God gives. God gives. You receive. You receive. Amen? See, here's the thing that sometimes gets us in trouble. We act like we are at, 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 at a, a fast food restaurant. I don't want that. Wait a minute. God gives. God gives. You receive. You receive. Okay, so... You get what you get. And don't throw a fit. And you don't throw a fit. Say, yeah, but you know, I, I, I was I was I was I was hoping that God was was gonna get me, you know, the big prize this time. Yeah. But God was saying, you ain't ready for the big prize yet. You still trying to develop on being dependable. So he has to continue to allow you to learn how to use your stick. This is, this is the thing that's so important, is that he gives everybody the measure of faith. So here's the thing, that when you grow up and you begin to understand is that where I run out on my abilities, right, that's why I got a brother or sister that can help me. Because that's why it tells us in the scripture, Matthew, he says two or three touching and agree on his name, right? Why? Because my ability sometimes runs out and I need to depend and rely on the next person who can get us to the next place. See, it's according to God's grace. Mm. But when we all connect, come on y'all, we all come into agreement, we can extend this thing. So, the measuring stick just as a weight. So let me back up. The gifts are tied to this measuring stick just as the weight is tied to the scale. So if you don't have any weights in the scale, can you accurately measure anything? No. Because the weights are designed to be a part of the scale 
And depending on which way you move it, allows you to be able to truthfully determine what the weight of the item is. Remember, we went back and said, we love the standard for when we go to the gas station <laughs> to ensure that we get a gallon, right? Yeah. It's all right then. So God wants to make sure that when you tell him he, you have faith, that you have all of them. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll move on. So, okay. I get it. I think. What you are saying is that faith is demonstrated. What? Faith is demonstrated? Yes, faith is demonstrated. How? How I act. Hmm. How do you act? Do you throw a fit when it didn't happen, when you had prayed for those 10 seconds? And 10 seconds later, you went back to go see if you got it, and you threw a fit? Is that how you act? How I exercise the gift God has given. What, what am I doing with the gift that God has given me? We just sang the song that said, the gift looks good on me. Mm -hmm. Do you wear it? Mm -hmm. Come on. That's one of the things I used to tell my kids. Boys, when they were growing up, I said, look here, you know, that daddy, daddy can't, ain't, ain't buying you no new car. I'm going to give you the hoopty right here. You're going <laughs> to drive me. And if you act like you don't appreciate it, don't worry. You ain't ever got to worry about getting the next one. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you didn't show appreciation for the gift that I did give you. Yeah, there's a whole lot of people out there walking because they don't appreciate the gift that was given to them. So God provides me with a standard and turns me loose to go for it with what he has, what? Given me. Given. Do we need to talk about it? Do we need to go a little bit deeper? Mm -hmm. Do we all remember the parable of the talents? We, we all do realize that, you know, the parable of the talents, the one who had the five is because he used five gifts. Mm -hmm. And the one who had four used four gifts. Mm -hmm. The one who had three used three. The one who had two used two. But the one who had one gift, he only had one gift. He only had one thing to do. He didn't even have no options. What he chose to do? Bury it. Mm. And what did God tell him? What did he say in the parable? <laughs> he didn't get nothing. God took what he had and gave it to someone else. Mm. God wants to know, what are you doing with yeah. your gift? And then it's, it says, it only shows up when I am operating the way God intends. Come on. Your faith only operates when you're using it the way God intends. Mm. All right. If you want to be a person who is confident and secure in your spiritual walk, someone who has strong, world-changing faith, then you must spend time reading, studying, and meditating on God's Word. It's the only way to achieve strength. So, the measure of faith that is developed and strengthened in you comes from one place, the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 tells us this, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in other words, it's telling us is that we go from the measuring stick to the actual tools. What are the actual tools that develop our faith? It's the word of God. You know, and God has allowed us to advance and to grow in our technology over these years, hasn't he? So we have it written, we have it in the form of video, we have it in the form of audio, all these different things to allow us to immerse ourselves into the word so that faith can come by what? Hearing. Hearing. Amen. Aren't you glad we live in the age where, you know, we can have faith and we can develop our faith while we're doing other things because we still have the ability to hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we can put it into our ears and continue to grow. So don't let anybody or the enemy convince you that you have weak or non-existent faith because only you can develop your faith. So listen to this as I close. 
you will be you will be amazed at just what the Lord can lead you to do with the measure of faith mm. He has already given you. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at what God can do. Amen. So, in closing, there are going to be situations that we find ourselves in where God is going to allow our faith to be tested. Somebody say, God's going to allow, God's going to allow your, faith to be tested. your faith to be tested. To measure the content of our faith, that is where our faith lies. So, we say it this way. If we can't measure it, we can't manage it. Mm. Can I say that one again? If I can't measure it, I can't manage it. That's right. So, if you want to know if you got faith, then you got to know you put something in there. It's kind of like your bank account. If you can't go back and recall the last time you put something in your bank account, <laughs> then, you know, probably there's nothing to change. Mm -hmm. Okay? Same thing with our faith, guys. If we're not adding to it, then... More than likely, it's not going. Right. All right. So to measure and weigh the depth of our faith, how deep, how far our faith runs, the measurement, the standard, to see how steadfast our faith is in God. Is it really? Isn't that what Daniel was showing us? Is that their faith really was in God? Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on, think about that for a minute. So, everybody else is eating the king's food, and they making it, and all of a sudden, we're going to come in, and we're going to change the program. You better know that you are on God's agenda. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, they knew they were on God's agenda. There are those moments in life, listen to this, there are those moments in life where our faith is tested so that we can see that God is faithful. Yeah, those moments when we need to see that God is faithful. Even when it is hard. Somebody say hard. Hard. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And downright unbearable. And downright unbearable. God is still with you. But it's only so that you can grow. Come on. You, 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 you're sensing that there's a change that is upon you. It feels tighter than that. It feels that God's not hearing your prayers. But all God is doing is allowing your faith to grow. Yeah, it's the faith muscle. You guys know that, right? The more I exercise, the more it what? Grow. It grows. So I gotta do what? Move it. Muscle. I gotta add some weight to it. Mm -hmm. And keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to walk through trials so that we can see him faith. Listen to this. Last verse. First Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24 says this. Give you guys a moment to get there. Sometimes we need to walk through trial so that we can see him faithful. Who's the him? God. God. Yeah. So it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace, him, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is, is faithful. faithful. He will surely do it. Somebody say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> won't God do it? Mm. Come on. You know, I love it when we get to the place where, you know, the end of your testimony is that won't he do it? Won't he do it? Come on. I thought it was impossible. But God, won't he do it? See, for some of us, yeah, we're still struggling with fleshly things because we're not willing to trust God. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, fleshly things. You know, we can't seem to get over habits or addictions. Come on, little things, temper tantrums. Hmm. Because we won't trust God to do it. Come on, just little things. Wow. Little things. You know, I remember having this conversation with a great friend of mine, Adrian, and he was talking about, he was talking about uh, his, his aches and pains, and, uh, and then he had a dream. And God kind of showed him that, you know, it was just like a little worm. He said, you doing all that whining and complaining over a little thing. Mm. Come on. Some of us are giving up on God over a little thing. A little thing. <laughs> a little thing. It's just a, a little thing. It's something that you're going to get over. You're going to grow past it if you continue to practice faith. Mm. A little thing. So this morning as I close, I don't want the little thing to take you out. What God wants for you to do is to continue. Somebody say continue. Continue. Continue in your trust for the Lord. And if nothing else, you know, you do what I do sometimes. I'll call on the name of the Lord. <laughs> he is worthy to he be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Sometimes we just get into those places where we don't know what to do. And that's okay because that means that when I don't know what to do, then that just means I need to lean and depend on God even more. Look, God ain't that at you. God wants to grow you because he wants to know how you do it. Come on, y'all. God wants to know how you do it. He ain't trying to hide from you. And he don't want you to hide from him. When Adam and Eve messed up, God showed up. He says, where you at? I want to know how you doing. You seen something you ain't never seen before, and it's about to take you out. It's a little thing. But you know what? I'm here. It's me. It's God. I'm here. Let me help you through this. And so let me pray for you. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Because, Father, you just want to help us. Or you just want to know how we're doing. You just want to know what is it that we, what is it that you can do to help us. So, Father, there's somebody right now, Lord, that's struggling and they don't know where to turn and where to go. And you just call them out, hey, it's God. I want help. Don't be ashamed. Don't act like I ain't seen you naked before. I'm God. I created you. I can help you. I can help you with your faith. And even I can help you with your unbelief. Will you let me? So, Father, it is our prayer, Lord, that we will let you help us in the tight place. In Jesus' name. All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but it's the intersections, right? It's the intersection of our faith and our action, mm. right? We say that we got faith and God says, all right, prove it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And so when the trial comes, you know, just know that, you know, it's not there to destroy you. It's there to prove right. what is truly in you. All right. Well, with that being said, we want to go ahead and transition to our next spot in this worship service and that is a place where we have an opportunity to give right so there's three ways that we can give here at Acts Christian Center the first way that we can give is by text and I got this 520-355-2820 amen? amen you can simply put that in your phone type give and the amount and then press in and you will receive the receipt the second way that you can give is by going to our website which is getting ready to be redeveloped. Amen. Go to axcc.org, click on the tab that says donate, and it will immediately take you to our, our page, and you will be able to give the amount you want to give. The third way that you can give is by mail. Somebody say mail. Mail. Yeah, we still take mail. And you simply put your own envelope, 
the address 3371 South Vine Street, Chandler, Arizona 85248 and you mail it to us and we'll receive it. Amen. And what we always say is that we're so thankful for the gifts that you give because it's what allows us to continue to do what God has called us to do. So with that being said, I want to pray for your offering this morning. Father, I thank you and praise you for the tithe and the offering that is coming to your storehouse. I thank you, Lord, that you have set the standard so that when we give, Lord God, there will be plenty in the storehouse. And so I thank you, Lord, that as we look out, Lord God, and we see the great need, Lord, that is upon us, Lord, that we can say that God supplies. Thank you for meeting the needs in your people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're almost there. We're almost done. And we're going to have a good Sunday. Somebody say a good Sunday. <laughs> a good Sunday. That means we get to take a nap. No? All right. I'm taking a nap. Well, with that being said, there's three things that we love to tell you here at Axe Christian Center. And we tell you this every week because we mean it. And the first one is, somebody say it. We love you. We love you. Yes, that is correct. We love you. We want you to always know that at the conclusion of the service, no matter how upset you may be with Pastor, that he didn't preach your favorite verse. He didn't say it right. Is that he still loves you. <laughs> and he still loves you. Amen. The second thing is we love to tell you is this, is that we respect. We respect you. We respect you. Because love and respect need to go together. And everybody needs some respect. <clears throat> and so it brings us to our last one, and that is you're part of our community. You're part of our community because of love. Sharon asked me uh, yesterday, she said, so who would you say is our community? And I want to say everybody. But the truth of it is, is that the people that are our community are the people who believe in giving love, and receiving love. And you will be amazed at how many people have a difficult time receiving love. You know, 15 years ago when we started our ministry in Maricopa, God put it on our heart to walk around and knock on as many doors as we can and just tell people that God loves them. And you'll be amazed at how many people looked at us and said, God doesn't love me because that's going to cost me something. And still to this day, we're still knocking on doors and people are still telling us they're struggling with being able to receive God's love. And so we have a mandate to help people understand that God loves them. And so we want you to join in our community to tell people that God loves them. And the way we do it is that God loves you and I love you too. Amen? So you got a, you got a neighbor they're sitting over there that's kind of mean. But you know what you have to do? I love you. And God loves you too. So with that being said, we will see you all next week. God bless you. Make sure you keep yourself hydrated through this heat. <laughs> see you soon. Amen.